Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is go over a recent app discovery of mine, Standard Notes. Standard Notes is a note-taking application, but don't let that scare you. It's not boring, I promise. It's actually quite good. In fact, it's become my note-taking app of choice on Linux. And Evernote refugees should especially take note, pun intended. There's going to be a lot of people that are coming from Evernote and are looking for a replacement, and Standard Notes is worth a consideration. Like I mentioned, Standard Notes is a note-taking app. And that might sound like a boring category of applications, but it might surprise you to learn that note-taking apps is a very competitive space right now. And there's so many of these that it can get kind of overwhelming to choose one. I mean, we have Joplin, Obsidian, SimpleNote, LogSeq, UpNote, and a number of others. However, the list gets a bit smaller when you prefer the application to be open source and support multiple platforms, including Linux. At first, Joplin was my initial pick, but its bugginess makes it borderline unusable at times with important information literally disappearing for no apparent reason. After that, I tried a bunch of different Note apps, including the ones that I just mentioned earlier. And among all of the ones that I tried, Standard Notes ended up becoming the winner. So what I'll do in this video is go over some of the things that I like about Standard Notes, as well as some of the things that I don't like as much. But before I get into that, I just wanted to mention that this video is not sponsored by Standard Notes at all. In fact, this video isn't sponsored by anyone. The thing is, I've been looking for a Note app for quite some time, and I just recently ended my search, so I figured I would make this video to see if Standard Notes is the solution that you might be looking for. And we'll get into the review shortly, but first I just wanted to let you know that I have two new courses available over on Udemy. So consider supporting Learn Linux TV and check out my courses. Over on Udemy, I have a brand new course that covers Linux Essentials, as well as the basics of automation with Ansible. On the Linux side, my new Linux Essentials course covers the certification from LPI, so it's great if you want to get certified, or even if you don't want to get certified, if you want to learn just basic Linux skills, it's great for that too. For those of you that are just getting into automation, then you should learn Ansible. Ansible is an awesome tool, and you could use it to automate all kinds of things, and my course will teach you everything you need to know to get started with it. Regardless of which course you choose, you'll get the same attention to detail and production quality with each and every lesson. After all, Learn Linux TV is a leader in educational content, and now it's bringing that expertise to Udemy. Thank you yet again for supporting Learn Linux TV and checking out my courses. Now it's time to get into standard notes and check out my review. All right, so what's so great about standard notes? Well, first of all, at its core, standard notes is a note-taking app. You could use it to jot down ideas, keep track of lists, take notes at college or work, and so on. While you could use a simple text editor to take notes, note-taking apps such as Standard Notes give you additional bells and whistles on top of that that give you additional functionality. For example, you could categorize your notes into folders and tags, download extensions, add pictures, and so on. One of the most common examples of such an app is Evernote, which to make a long story short isn't recommended right now and many people are out there looking for alternatives. And convenient for them, there's a bunch of note-taking apps that have sprung up recently with Standard Notes being the subject of today's video. So I've mentioned that Standard Notes won out over all the other ones that I've tried, so what exactly makes it better than the competition? Well, first of all, it just works. You might think that storing text files is an easy thing, and it kind of is, but a lot of Note apps just get it wrong. So it could be hard to choose one, but it ultimately comes down to the features that you're looking for. For me, Standard Notes checks all of my boxes. If you want to check out Standard Notes, you could download it for free, but keep in mind, there are some paid tiers available, so some of the features are locked behind a paywall. One of the most noteworthy features is that Standard Notes features multiple different types of notes. For example, when you create a new note, you could create it as plain text, rich text, a code file, markdown, or even a spreadsheet. The ability to choose a note style for each of the different things that you keep track of means you won't need to force each note to adhere to one format, you could choose the format that's best for each individual note. In fact, some of the plugins that are available will provide you with additional note types. In addition, there's other features that are noteworthy, such as the choice between several color schemes, the ability to sort notes into folders, attach files, and more. I mentioned earlier that the app is multi-platform, which means you could download it for multiple operating systems. You could download standard notes for Windows, Linux, Mac OS, mobile, and there's even a web client for those of you that live in your browser. 
I also wanted to take a moment and talk about the syncing features when it comes to standard notes. Cloud syncing in standard notes is completely optional, but if you subscribe to this service, then that means you'll have the same notes on each of your devices. And for someone like me that uses multiple devices, sync is pretty much essential. The way that cloud syncing works is you could either opt out of it completely, or you can subscribe to one of two paid plans with various features each. For those of you that want to sync to your own server, you can do that with standard notes. In fact, they make a Docker container available for those of you that want to self-host the solution. But perhaps an easier way is just to make one of your installations a server. You can literally go into settings and enable server mode, which means that app is now the server, and then you could join your other installations to it. This solution works on your local area network, and it could be a good solution for those of you that want to sync the solution, but you don't want to run Docker and you want something easier, then you might want to check out the local sync feature, which could check the box for you. All right, so I just mentioned some of the things that I like about standard notes, and what I'll do right now is talk about some of the things that I don't like as much. The most annoying downside for me is that you can't print your notes. Well, you can, but basically you have to export a note, open it in a different application, and then print it from there. The developers actually have some information on the website that explains why this functionality is missing, saying that implementing printing is non-trivial. Well, trivial or not, it's a required feature and other notes are able to print. So if other apps have printing figured out, then there's no reason for standard notes not to have it. Another potential downside is that the desktop app for standard notes utilizes Electron, which I understand some people just don't like. However, I don't see any performance issues and the app works perfectly fine for me, so I don't really think this matters, but some people prefer to be aware of that for some reason. All in all, Standard Notes is a very good application. Although I did mention some cons when it comes to this app, I do recommend that you check it out. It's become my note-taking application of choice, and I love it. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say. In the meantime, though, be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.